Hey everyone, this is Krista Bontrager. I want to thank you for watching today. And this is continuing a series that I've been doing recently on my YouTube channel, just taking a closer look at the organization MOPS or Mothers of Preschoolers. Now they've been going through some transitions um, starting around the fall of 2016, as far as I can tell. And um, I've done a couple book reviews and in this video, I'm going to take a closer look at uh, the Leader's Guide version of their a study for the MOPS group. So this would be a study that they would do with members of MOPS called Fierce Love. And as you can see the cover here, this is it. And I'm in particular gonna be looking at the Facilitator's Guide. So this contains not only the guide itself, that the end user would be using the mom who's in the MOPS group. But this also includes the answers for the facilitator, the proposed answers and some of the discussion prompts. So we're gonna take a closer look at this. So just to give a little context here, I'm going to take a look at the title page. You can see that this was published in 2018. Now I know that after the publication of Mandy Arioto's book in 2016, uh, the MOPS organization did receive a fair bit of feedback about that. And their claim is that um, they made some adjustments and some course corrections, and that's great, that's awesome. So I just wanna take a closer look by 2018, um, what some of those course corrections might be. Now, I already reviewed the Share Jesus book, which was also published in 2018, and I would guess and imagine, assume, that those would have contained the course corrections. Although, as I noted in that video, I didn't really see um, a lot of specific uh, information for the leaders on how to actually share the gospel. But let's take a closer look at this discussion guide for 2018 and see what it has to say. Now, one of the things I noticed right away in this little booklet is uh, there's quite a, a fair bit of discussion uh, related to anxiety and depression. So this makes me think that that um, affects a fair number of MOPS members, which would make sense. Many of them might be mothers of newborns, very young children, they might still be suffering from postpartum depression. So, you know, no quibble with that, just kind of noticing that content a little unusual, but it makes sense given their audience. As you can see here in the um, overview of week one, that is something that contains uh, a fair bit of discussion there. Also in week one, there's some commitments or group expectations that they expect members to sign off on. And you can kind of read those here in statements about trying to create a safe space and confidentiality and that sort of thing. And then members are supposed to um, sign their names. Now, one thing that caught my eye here is this, I will not judge women in this group. That's such a loaded word in our current cultural um, moment that we're in, the word judge. Um, so it's a little hard to know what they're talking about there. Uh, one way of interpreting that is that I'm going to try not to overly share my opinions about what other people are going through. Um, and if that's the ground rule and if that's what's intended, I could, I could kind of see some rationale for that. But on the other hand, um, if someone is spouting errant doctrine and we're not supposed to say anything about that or provide any feedback about that, that would be a bit more problematic for me. So that was just one of the items that uh, caught my eye. And then the explanation of it didn't really help to clarify the, the explanation that is in the, the leader's guide. It says there is no condemnation in this place, Romans 8. Now, if we're talking about condemnation when it comes to I have been saved in Christ, which is the context of Romans 8, certainly I don't want to condemn someone who is a true believer and shows real evidence and fruit of, of their faith and their walk in Christ. I certainly don't want to 
judge them in an ultimate sense that only belongs to Christ and make a pronouncement over them that they aren't a Christian. That, that makes sense to me. But this is just kind of vague. If I was in the group, I would be asking a lot of questions of what are the parameters of these judgments? What am I allowed to say? What am I lo not allowed to say? What does this really mean? Um, and there isn't a lot of help on the facilitator's end uh, to help guide them in knowing how to answer those kind of questions. Maybe the facilitators would be kind of glad I'm not in their group asking such questions. But yeah, that was just, uh, that one just kind of stuck out at me. Now I'm going to scroll down a bit more here and you can see this page on mood and anxiety disorders that I mentioned earlier that's part of this lesson. And it does help have some helpful um, questions for, for women who might be struggling with what they call scary thoughts, like how to know when you need professional help. I thought that's actually probably a good conversation to have and something to include. I really appreciated this section on the mommy wars and just say, hey, we're not going to have fights about moms who work versus moms who stay at home. We're going to honor and respect each other and use language of honor with one another. I thought that was that was some good thoughts and good to include there. Okay, now I'm going to scroll down to week number three, which is really what I want to focus on for the rest of this video. And again, there's a little overview here, and uh, I really want to focus on this issue of rest. But you can see the, the uh, topics that they're covering here. And again, a, a lot of this I would characterize as sort of pop psychology, uh, giving women some practical tips on how to deal with being a young mom or being a mom of a young child and feeling overwhelmed at times, having overwhelming moments. They have the tool here about halts. Uh, that's a tool that my therapist walked me through 15 years ago. It's a very basic tool. And then there's some discussion here about sleep. And, you know, that sleep is important, but it's hard. You know, many young moms are sleep deprived, quite honestly, and, and the effects of sleep deprivation and what can the ha that can have on you if it goes on for a while and the importance of rest. And I think that these are all very, very fine ideas. But then we get to uh, this discussion on Mark chapter six. And this is what I really wanna bring out in this video, is that the, the doctrinal statement on the MOPS website is solid. And I would even say that their ministry statement and purpose is solid. Like, I can get behind that. I can get behind the idea of wanting to do outreach to moms of young kids. Like that all makes sense. I am for that, okay? So this isn't about me being anti-sharing the gospel or anti-outreach or anti-inviting, like none of those things. But what does concern me is that when scripture is used, I see a consistent pattern in the MOPS materials where scripture is not really interpreted in a very sound way. It, um, I would even say that the way that the scripture is used in the MOPS materials that I've looked at that have been published since 2016 seem to decouple um, the historical context of Jesus and they kind of put him into our context and, and they just import his words into our context without giving the proper historical, cultural, Jewish uh, flavor of scripture and, and understanding what the assumptions were of Jesus's original audience. And so then we get very far afield from what scripture actually means and then we're just importing it into our current cultural condition and concerns. So this passage here and their use of Mark chapter six is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So they wanna talk about rest, importance of rest to these this group of sleep deprived women. Awesome, let's have that conversation. But then they turn us to this incident in Mark chapter six where Jesus was tired after a very vigorous time of teaching. And so he gets, uh, he, he goes in this boat and he wants to go to a solitary place so that he can rest. And so he gets in the boat and he actually ends up falling asleep. 
And then a big storm erupts and he wakes up and he calms the storm and, and, and it's a very famous story. He says, quiet, be still to the waters and instantaneously they are. And then he says to the disciples, why are you afraid? Um, do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, what is this? That even the wind and the waves obey him. Now, great story. I know what this story means in the context of the original historical cultural setting. So let's see how that plays out here in the, the, um, the study guide. It says, ask your group for their reflections. In both of these passages, Jesus and his disciples have been in very tiring positions for a period of time. After their work, Jesus created space for rest. In Mark 6, Jesus fed the disciples and then asked them to rest. They had to get in the boat and leave to go to a separate place to rest. Where can you go to find rest even for a moment? So do you notice what, what the authors did there? They, they were making an observation from scripture and then they immediately imported it into the women's context. Jesus tells his disciples they need rest. Where do you rest? When do you rest? In Mark chapter 4, Jesus had laid down in the boat on the other side, on the way to the other side of the lake to rest. Even in the middle of the storm, Jesus slept to recover from the time he had spent teaching and preaching. Now again, notice the discussion questions. If Jesus believed he needed to take time to rest, what does that mean for you? So again, there's this immediate line from, well, here's what the scripture says to here's what this means for you. Jesus rested, you should rest. It's almost like the old Dick and Jane books, like see Jane run, you run like Jane. <laughs> see Jesus rest. You rest like Jesus. It's, it's a very peculiar um, form of application. Now, again, I'm not against resting. I, I've been in ministry situations and it can be exhausting. I've been the mother of very small children. It is also exhausting. There were many times when I needed to go take a nap. But that's just wise, sound advice. In fact, I'm thinking maybe there's something that you could take from the book of Proverbs about that that would be extremely appropriate. Uh, the genre of the book of Proverbs is about practical life advice. That could be something. But to take this story about Jesus and have the application primarily being about rest, to me strikes me as is extremely peculiar and very unfaithful to scripture. The purpose of this story in a nutshell is for Jesus to demonstrate that he truly is God. Because God alone can control the weather. And so when he wakes up, um, he is demonstrating that he isn't a mere man. He's not merely a prophet. He is God come in the flesh. And he is able to control the weather and, and tame the wind and the waves. Now, the mops people, based on what I read on their website, might come back to me and say, yeah, but we're not a women's Bible study. We're trying to do outreach to people who are unchurched. That's great. I'm all for that. But I don't think you need to have much of a Bible study in, in your background or what you're doing to at least be dealing faithfully with scripture. If we're dealing with non-Christians, we don't want to start them at the outset with bad modeling on how to interpret scripture. Rather, we want to gently bring them in and to show who Jesus really is. So much of the MOPS materials is about pointing people to Jesus, which I applaud. I think that's great. But this was a prime opportunity where they could have pointed to Jesus as being God himself come in the flesh. Look at how powerful Jesus is. And that he, he is who he says he is, who he claims to be. That's a powerful moment to introduce a, a non-Christian woman to. So I don't know why we have to water this down with kind of these 21st century agendas about anxiety and depression 
um, and resting when we could allow the scriptures to speak for themselves or we could get better scriptures to really illustrate the point we want to make. That's my general critique of their, the MOPS method um, in this book. M many fine points are made, but just seems like consistently when they come to scripture, they don't deal with it in a faithful way. And in my opinion, that's not an issue of alienating non-Christians. That's an issue of missing a prime opportunity to really show them the real Lord Jesus Christ. Anyways, my hope in all of this is not to sandbag mops. I, I really hope that this will offer them a course correction and that they will continue to improve their materials and to really make them sharper because they have a wonderful opportunity to reach out to this particular mission field. That's how I see it. And I do look forward to your feedback. Thanks for watching.